For this first demo, I have already prepared a Visual Studio project. This is Visual Studio 2012. And I have created a, a, an ASP.NET MVC4 empty web project. The goal is to have, yes, I have to tell you, to have a chat application running at the end of this course. Not because I don't have any ideas about good use cases or about good demos, but uh, because chat is really, really a very, very good and simple enough to understand use case in order to to show a lot of the concepts and a lot of the ideas um, of SignalR and SignalR hops and push services. Uh, therefore, so please bear with me. Don't shoot me. We're going to implement a simple chat. All right. So there are several ways to get started. Um, I'm going to, to have a stab at adding a new project item here inside of my simple chat MVC application. Inside of the web category, we have a SignalR hub class template, and we are going to call it chat hub. Now, let's make that a small h. What now happens is Visual Studio creates a new hub class and also adds a bunch of assemblies which actually implement the SignalR functionality, which are based on NuGet packages. So here it's SignalR core, it's SignalR OWIN, and it's SignalR system.web, which is based, at least the SignalR OWIN one, which is based on the OWIN implementations here in OWIN host system web and OWIN. All right. And we also have the already mentioned Newtonsoft JSON.NET assembly and package installed here. Okay. Here we have a public class which derives from Hub. It's called ChatHub, which means it's projected into the public API as ChatHub. We don't want that. What we want is we want to have a hub name. of chat. So this is the alias that is going to be used and being projected into, into the public API now. And we don't want to have a public um, void hello, but we actually want a little bit more um, implementation for our chat hub, which means we're going to say um, public void send message. Oh, I'm sorry. And we are passing in a string, string message. And then here we have this client's um, property, which, um, which is the main point, the main entry point, or the main access point in order to, to push back data to, to the clients and to the callers. All right. So you see there is... Not a lot going on here. One important thing to mention is if we have a look at the app start, there is a configuration for web API, there is a configuration for routes, and there is also a configuration for the filters. They all do not have anything to do with, um, with signal R, but they are actually plain pure ASP.NET stuff. So in order to really make our hub working inside of ASP.NET, we need something like route table dot routes map hubs. So if we now go and compile this, Go back to our chat hub. Yeah, it all looks good. And just try to do a control F5. Initially, we won't see anything spectacular, I guess. 
But there is a small hint for you to check whether everything went all right. Um, yes, that's fine. Let's call it signal our hubs. Right. That doesn't work because we made a mistake. And that's good to make a mistake because we all learn from mistakes. Let's put it up here. <clears throat> okay, going back and let's try that again. So it's an, it's an empty web application. That means we should get a resource not found once again. And let's try that again for signal or hubs. And now we can see that there is um, an automatically generated JavaScript file. And if everything went all right, we're going to see down here that we have something called, well, a chat hub, uh -huh. which is going to expose inside of the JavaScript file, which is based on the chat up class here. All right, so again, don't make the mistake that I just made. Of course, it was on purpose. Yeah, you would have guessed. Um, first do the map hubs on the routes table and then register um, your other routes. Okay, so these are the first basic steps in order to get going. Um, let's have a look at not just sending simple strings or simple types, but going to have something like a, a send message data method, which actually sends out a complex type. Okay. So let's create class for send data. And send, send data is just a, a POCO class which holds stuff like, I don't know, maybe an ID and also a string. Right. This is absolutely well, no problem at all and support it because um, it's going to be JSON serialized. We can now go and say clients.all. I don't know, let's call it new data in order to, to send the data down the wire, maybe something like process incoming data, transform data, craft new data, you get it, and then send it back, or maybe take a new instance in order to send back the data. All right, what we also can do is we can have not just um, a simple method which returns, well, here it's void and takes a simple type and a complex type. Actually, we could also return the person again, okay? But what I'm going to show you here is we can also return a task of something. So for example, at a, oh, I'm sorry, task of integer and something like send data async and have asynchronous work going on in here. So these are basically the three the three models that are supported by SignalR. Simple types, complex types and well also asynchronous types, asynchronous wrappers as task or task of T. All right, great. So 
we have started a chat hub. We will call this here, for example, new message. So the client calls a message or a method called send message and passes a message string. And we call a method on the client called new message, which takes the message as well and tries to broadcast it to all clients. Okay. And here um, we are going just, well, yeah. I think we're not going to use this one. It's just for illustration purposes as well as the one down here. This is the reason why I'm going to to comment it out. All right, so basic steps get you going. This is the first hop in Signal R.